Subterfuge is a man-in-the-middle attack framework that provides two key features. The primary being ease of use, followed closely by a layered architecture. The idea here is to combine a snazzy graphical user interface with a subset of man-in-the-middle attack plugins that can easily produce combined effects. By leveraging the man-in-the-middle attack position, we can deliver some pretty darn interesting attacks. Things like injecting arbitrary code into a browser session, including uh, exploits, or harvesting user web login credentials silently, or even downgrading or intercepting HTTPS traffic. The goal of the Subterfuge team is to take all of these effects and make them easy to use attack options. So the Subterfuge project has finally moved over to a new GitHub, uh, which is a really good move for us considering that our old uh, mechanism, Google Code, stopped working several years ago. That said, we finally joined on and uh, started using uh, GitHub with a vengeance, as it will. Um, to make the installation process a little bit more simple, we also uh, put together a collection of uh, scripts to automate the install, um, and we've tested it significantly on Kali Linux 2.0. So let's get started. In this demonstration, we'll be using VirtualBox to virtualize Kali 2.0 SANA, as well as Windows 8.1. The Windows 8.1 machine will uh, simulate a, uh, a client that will be attacked, it will be man in the middle, and then we'll, uh, we'll gather some uh, user session login credentials from them. And the Kali box is what we'll actually use to install Subterfuge and uh, perpetrate the attack. The first step, of course, is to uh, navigate to our GitHub and grab the clone URL, which we can then git clone into Subterfuge. And when we move into the directory, we can run the installation script. The installation script will automatically uh, download and install, leveraging the Kali repos, and then configure any dependencies required to run subterfuge on your system. It will then remove any uh, existing installation of subterfuge and replace it with the new, more cutting-edge version of Subterfuge. It's important to note this because if there is any uh, information you would like to maintain in the Subterfuge database at the time, you should save that in an alternate location before running the Subterfuge update script. At this point, running Subterfuge is also quite simple. You just type in Subterfuge and it will immediately start up on your loopback interface, which we can then browse to using the built-in browser. At this point, we see Subterfuge. Subterfuge is also quite easy to uh, run. You just hit the Start button. Subterfuge will then ask you if you'd like to auto-configure network settings, which in this case, we are more than happy to let it do. And then it will begin an ARP cache poison attack. On the Windows machine, we can run ARP-A in order to see what the uh, current status of the ARP cache table is. As we can see here, the uh, Default gateway, 10.0.3.1, has a physical address starting with 52. If the ARP cache poison attack is successful, this address should change. And as we can see, it uh, certainly did. That means that most likely our ARP cache poison attack has been successful. And we can uh, begin browsing from this Windows 8 box, and we'll see the information appear in near real time on the subterfuge system. So you open up the default browser. Um, Inner Explorer naturally goes to msn.com, and Subterfuge immediately begins collecting all kinds of session-related data associated with this connection. Uh, in this case, all kinds of cookies that MSN sets in order to track information about browsers and users. Our next step will be to uh, browse to, say, ebay.com, where we'll attempt to log in using uh, bogus credentials. As you can see, Subterfuge continues to, to, to collect more session tracking type data. And we will log in with a fake account. Uh, in fact, we'll call it fake uh, account. And we'll make the password very secret PW. Bam. And then we'll sign it. Now, as you can see, the connection here has remained HTTP. This is important because the default attack utilized by Subterfuge is SSL strip, where it will take an HTTPS session and it'll downgrade it to HTTP. At this point, um, Subterfuge should have collected the, uh, the, the information through its credential harvester module. 
Here we can see fake account and very secret PW. In fact, my uh, spelling has been quite good here because, you know, were that a successful login, it actually would have been legitimate. That's an important point to illustrate, however. Subterfuge will collect exactly what the user posts through his browser. This means that if he types his password in incorrectly, you'll see the incorrect password in Subterfuge. That does also mean, though, that if he persists in uh, logging in, you'll see him log in with one wrong password, another wrong password, and finally uh, complete with his correct password, presuming that he actually makes it in, which you might be able to also gather based on the session cookie information. If any of these session cookies is, in fact, a cookie that you can use to, um, to hijack somebody's session, then you'll see that cookie here. You can click on that, and then you'll see the cookie. Uh, Subterfuge, go ahead and pop that up for you, and you can use a uh, cookie um, uh, editor in order to change that and browse the website as that user. To stop the attack, it's very simple as well. You just click the stop button. In the most basic sense, this is all it takes to install Subterfuge on Kali Linux and begin executing an attack. Subterfuge does, however, have a significant amount of additional features that we'll walk through very briefly in order to discuss other attack alternatives. So if you move to the modules page, you can here see um, several modules that are installed in Subterfuge. In the main page, you would notice that the Credential Harvester module is green, but all the other ones, by default, are red. If, for instance, we'd like to enable the Code Injection module, we go to the Modules page, go to Code Injection, collect, select Running, and choose how we'd like to, what we'd like to inject. Alternatively, one can control some of these settings from the Direct Harvester page by clicking the drop-down here. So we can set the injection server to running, and then select what information we'd like to inject there as well. Other settings can be controlled directly from the Subterfuge settings page. From here, we can do things like control the interface that we want to poison on. In this case, we only have one interface, so our options are somewhat limited. Alternatively, we can also look at the uh, gateways that Subterfuge has attempted to auto-detect via uh, multiple mechanisms, and we can pick between those, presuming that Subterfuge may have guessed incorrectly. Alternatively, we can manu manually set the gateway. For instance, let's say we entered into a network segment with non-standard IP configurations and Subterfuge was unable, for whatever reason, to detect the gateway. Subterfuge will notify you in the, uh, the uh, notifications area of the harvester that something potentially went wrong. You'll see a gateway not found error. In this situation, we can find the gateway out ourselves simply by uh, potentially pinging the broadcast or collecting it directly from our DHCP entry, and we can supply that gateway here. We can also select the proxy mode that Subterfuge uses in its attack. And then we can uncheck auto configure so that none of this will change, and we can click apply. At this point, Subterfuge will now utilize whatever gateway it was we specified here, and will no longer conduct an SSL stripping attack, but will use the minimum proxy in order to directly interdict an SSL connection. By default, Subterfuge uses the same SSL key as Superfish. By using the same SSL key as Superfish, we're able to man in the middle, silently, over HTTPS, any Lenovo system that still has Superfish installed or had Superfish installed but did not remove it from the certificate chain. Other settings that we can uh, modify with Subterfuge include alternative man-in-the-middle vectors. If we don't want to do ARP cache poisoning, Subterfuge does have alternative options. We can also set configuration in order to control the, uh, the, the rates of the graphical user interface itself and control the, uh, the ARP cache poison if we want more fidelity in our attack itself. There are also some advanced configuration options regarding the notification system, uh, but most of Subterfuge's settings are quite self-evident. Things like exporting your data so that you can recover it and maintain it, purging data so that you can clear it out. We'll do that right now. And then when we return to the main Subterfuge page, you can see that we've cleared out everything and Subterfuge is ready to go from scratch again. So I hope that this tutorial has been informative for you and that you've uh, picked up another trick or two. And if you've already used Subterfuge, uh, I hope we've let you know that we're back on track and we should be delivering new features in the uh, short term. Happy hacking.